The double cage. Right, right. I gotta fix that. There we go. All right, Cade, are you ready to do some hacking yeah. teaching? Yeah. So, yeah. So, what do you want from this, Flint? That's what I want to ask you, Remy. To... What I want from this is to make, uh, is to learn how to make a 3D avatar, preferably a furry one. Right. Okay. So, you want to make it for yourself, for others? What's your end goal? Um, well, in this case, um, I want to basically, it's not, I, I don't really need something especially for myself, uh, cause it's, uh, cause I, this for me is more about the experience of learning how to do it. Um, but you know, a model that could be used, uh, or that is like nice for both me and for the audience sounds nice. Okay. So. What I want to start with you and with everybody in the chat as well is mm. whenever you're approaching a model from the start, you want to have a good idea of where the end result is. Mm. This isn't just you need a reference sheet. This isn't just you need um, images and you need to know the tools. We want to kind of establish where we want to go with this from mm -hmm. the get go. So you want to make a more general model. Mm -hmm. Am I getting that right? Yes. Okay. So, are there any general models out there that you like, that you've seen already? Because one of the best things you can do when learning is reference, is research. Mm -hmm. So, are there any models out there that you quite like, base models or such? Um... I don't have any specifically in mind. Um... Right. But I know yours. Yeah, so you know my models. Um, right, okay. So, end result is just a basic uh, 3D model. Do mm. we have any references that you want to go off for use during this project? If I have any references for me to go off of. Yes. Uh, because it's your character. We want to we wanna go from where you want to go from. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, ooh, um, I should have read the curriculum beforehand, shouldn't I? Perhaps. <laughs> Gosh dang it. It's like coming into a class without the notebook. It's like, oh, whoa. Oh. Dang it. <laughs> it's more, I just want to understand where we, you want to go with this so mm -hmm. that I can teach you in the way to get there. Yes, of course, there's going to be basic tools that we're going to learn, but if we don't know the end result, it's quite hard to direct you how to get there. Well, um, I made a, like, I, I've, I've drawn a ref sheet that is specifically made as a ref for a potential 3D model. Uh, but it wasn't my plan to make it myself. <laughs> but we could use it. I always just use it for a basis. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me grab it. Um, uh, let's see. Technically, it's not quite finished as a ref sheet, but it should function fine. Um, let's see. Uh, I have it in Bird Arc 2023. And that is this one. Uh, no bits. <laughs> say image I'm going to send you personally as well. It's an anatomy drawing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to use this as the basis because I assume mm -hmm. that you would like this in VR and as a VTuber. Yes. Yes. Which means that we're going to want to follow along with humanoid proportions. Mm -hmm. So I've just sent you there the muscle diagram of a female. <laughs> female. <laughs> I've sent you a muscle diagram of a female. Um. Uh, let so me. we've got those models. Shall so, I just open? Can I open Discord on the screen, or do you want me to? Uh... I'll open Discord on the screen. It's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, then that is my. Discord server, and here is this. There we go. Okay. People so can see with say whom that? I've had DMs in the past. Oh no. Now, the chat might be wondering do you need to know muscles and anatomy in full detail to make a model? 
No. It helps a lot, but you only need to be able to reference a image. You don't actually need to understand it entirely because one of the good things about 3D compared to say 2D is that you can constantly readjust as you're building the model. So the overall process of making this model is going to go from blocking out, which is just simply where we're giving ourselves the topology, we're giving ourselves the shape of the overall model, which we can then further refine into the shapes that we actually want. So if you want it to be buff, you could refine it to that way. If you want it to have boobs, great, you can bring them out. But first we've got to establish the hips, the chest, the legs, the arms, the head, hands, and feet. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so if you've saved that, I sent you the Vulcan model, which is a base model that I've been working on, but you have. you've just got the pure body of it. Right, so I have it right here. So this is what we would call a base. This is literally the this is just the body that you can then work from um, and build on. Generally, when you're creating an avatar, this is where you want to start because you want to make sure that all your shapes, your proportions, and all that is correct before you start adding things like tails, mm -hmm. ears, like noses, teeth, mouth, all that, of that stuff. We want to we want to go step by step. So the 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 thing we're going to do today is called blocking. Right. Um, and we're going to start that back in the um, uh, on the cube. Yeah, okay, I'll open it. Also, I love how people in chat are saying like, I can bring out boobs. I love bringing out boobs. Bring out boobs when <laughs> bring I Bring out wish. the boobs. Bring out your tits. I mean, dead. That's the quote. So what we're going to do first is mm -hmm. you've got a numpad on your keyboard, correct? I do. Okay, so just for those in the chat that might not know to navigate around a blender scene um the first thing you, that you'll want to oh, do real quick is Cade. the middle mouse button the middle mouse button um isn't there also a thing that we can install i think i had it installed with which you can see the buttons that i press there is it's called screencast if you've already installed it once it may still already be in so go to edit edit preferences Preferences, add-ons, add-ons, and search for screencast. Yeah, screen screencast keys. It is enabled. Okay. So in the main scene itself, so you can exit the preferences. Okay. So you can press X. Press N on your keyboard. And there, to the side there that, of that, what's just popped out, ah. there are some tabs. There's screencast. Ah. Click on the top there. And there okay. We go. And nice. It should already be set from the last time we were using it. If you've not, yeah. You can adjust the font size and mouse thickness in those little menus there. Okay. So now people can also kind of see what we're doing in terms of key presses and mouse mouse things. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah. So going over the basic tools, middle mouse scroll up and down you zoom in and out by the way if anybody wants to follow along with this feel free to we're going fairly slow with this uh, because I'd want to make sure that Flint actually understands uh, the concepts which I'll be trying to teach so yeah so middle mouse scroll zoom in and out if you mm -hmm. hold middle mouse, you can then rotate, rotate around your object. And if you hold shift and then click your middle mouse, you can pan. Woo! So there's your basic like view controls. Um, why I was asking about the numpad is that the numpad also controls the view. So if you could just press five yeah. on your numpad. Real quick, I will also let people know that yes, we're going to be having a VOD of this. It will be saved. Yes. You can see that that changes it to orthographic. There Ooh. are times where we will want to model in orthographic and blocking is mostly done in orthographic. Um, so if you press five again, it'll switch it back to perspective. Right. Um, pressing one, three, and seven on the keyboard. One is the front view. 
Three is the right view, and then seven is the top view. Right. If you hold control, you'll get the inverse of that. So control one is the reverse, control three is the left, and control seven is for the bottom. Bottom. Um, like y'all in chat. And generally I'm with I'm that, kidding. that's most of what we need. There is one thing that a lot of beginners don't know that you can do. If you press, press period on the numpad, it on will numpad. refocus your view on whatever is currently selected. So sometimes you might find that your camera gets way off scene. Um, if you ever just go up into your, uh, your collection menu, which is up in the top right, you can click on an item and then press period and it'll drag you back. Wait, what, how? Okay. Um... So that's your collection up there, where your mouse is. It's kind of like layers in, oh, just over to the right, Flint. Uh, Remy, Remy. This one? These? Oh, no, no. I'm, I'm silly. I'm with, fully within this scene. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's your scene collection. So that, that'll that contain anything that's in the scene. Mm -hmm. uh, cameras, cube, light. Um, if you add something, it'll add it there. Okay. So we're actually going to want to add the first thing, which is that anatomy drawing that we've got. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to press 1. On the keypad. What? Oh, on the keypad? On the keypad. Yeah. It. Shift and A. So Shift and A is our add menu. So we can add a lot of things here, but for now, we just want to add an image. So we'll go down to where it says image. Uh, image. That's it there. Reference. And we want to add it as a reference because mm -hmm. we're just going to work with it within the scene. So we click reference. And, and it'll ask us what image we want to open up. Oh, uh, oh god, uh, uh, it was called... Uh, 44B... 44 44 okay. <laughs> oh, it's also in reverse order, great. Uh, 44BD... That's the one. Yeah. There it is in the scene now. So, if we want to move this about... Ooh. Um, we can oh. press G and that will remove it. So, oh. what I want you to do G is, just to, is just to move the camera ever so slightly with your um, middle mouse button, just so we're rotating to the side of it a little bit. Mm. And I want you to move the muscles back along the green line. That is our Y axis. So we're going to move it behind the cube. I pressed Y, because I remember that, and that allows yes. me to so that slide it along. It to the Y axis, there you go. Um, and what I want you to do, just for a second, mm -hmm. click onto the cube and press H. Now, press Alt H. H and Alt H are hide and unhide. That makes so sense. When Whenever we don't want to see an object within the scene, we can just simply hide it and then bring it back. Mm -hmm. So for now, we're just going to hide these, this uh, cube. Okay. So press one again. Oh, on the key, on the numpad. So that we're looking from the front. Okay, so we want the diagram that's on the left, the one mm -hmm. that's facing forward, mm -hmm. to be directly down that blue line and so that the feet are touching the red. Feet touching the red. Okay, so That's first it. I line it up like that. So I, I pressed X to, to, to slide it alongside the X axis, and now I'm gonna grab it and I press Z to slide yes. it upwards. And that slides it up. There. And we're just plopping it there. That's it. Um, so one thing we are going to do over to the right, Flint, do you mm -hmm. see how underneath where the collection is, we have a selection of tabs um, and such down there. This is our properties panel. So just there, mm -hmm. this whole thing is our properties panel. What I'm going to ask you to do is, do you see the one that looks like an image in red? Yes, this one. Click onto that. This is the properties of our image. And what I'm going to ask you to do is where it says opacity, just mm -hmm. click that so there's a tick box onto it mm -hmm. and just bring that down a little bit. Like 
So uh, you're night? Bring or? it down a bit more, like however much you want, because what we just want to do here is make it so it's semi-transparent, so well, that when we're looking through the back of it, we can still see. Halfway, I think it's fine. Okay, sweet. So you might ask why we put it on the red and why the, the feet are on there. When we're looking at the center of our scene, we are looking at the zero, zero point. When we're making avatars, we want to make sure that it's aligned on that zero, zero point. Mm -hmm. So just by doing that, we've made sure that it's where it should be. Right. So unhide that cube. Oh, yeah. Uh, cube. So that is Alt H. Or you can actually just click the little I in the scene. That works that as well. That also works as well. Generally, I'll try and introduce you to keybinds first because the way the yeah. blender is set up, it is very much keybind heavy. Right, but I needed to find a way to select the cube as well. So I could yes. just click on it here oh, and, did, and did the. the if, with Alt H, it will unhide anything in the scene. You don't oh, have to select Oh, okay. It. I thought I needed to select it before unhiding it. No, no, it. it will just completely. Anything that's hidden will unhide. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so. Currently, we're in object mode. This means we can move that move that cube around. So if you press G for a second and move that cube around, great, we can move the cube. Now, do you see the little orange dot in the middle of it? Yes. That is our origin point. That is where Blender is seeing the beginning of the model. So with the default cube, this is directly in the middle. Right. That's great for a cube. But we're not wanting to work with a cube. If you go to the Vulcan model that I've sent you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you see where the orange dot is? Uh, at the origin point. At the, at at the, the origin. At the zero at point. Zero, zero. Yeah. It's where the... Because the way that video games tend to work mm -hmm. is wherever that origin point is, it's where it will contact the ground. So we want to make sure that when we're setting up this base model, mm -hmm. that we're starting off on the right foot, so to speak. So if you want to go back to the um, to your cube. Mm -hmm. So how do we move it without moving the origin point? Well, we're in object mode right now. So whenever we move an object, we'll move all of it, including all the data. So what we actually want to be, we want to be in edit mode. So you can do that by going to that menu up there, or mm -hmm. just by pressing tab on your keyboard. I got it. You got it. So, like I said, we're at the blocking stage so far. So we're actually going to start playing around with the cube. So I want you to look directly at the front. Mm -hmm. Hold on. So press one on Oof. your keyboard. Yep. And actually no the first thing i'm going to get you to do we're going to put a mirror modifier on this uh, because we want it to work as a you know want it to be mirrored yeah so the first tool i'm going to introduce you to if any of you are listening this is one that you probably want to write down it will be one you will use a lot during the modeling this yeah. is what's called a loop cut so to do a loop cut we press Control and r on our keyboard and now, if you hover over the cube, you can see there it's added a yellow line. Um, and this is the cut. So wherever your line is on an edge, it'll cut across that line. Mm -hmm. And it'll add that line if you click. So if you click now, and then click again to set it. Right, because so, you can move it while you have it enabled there. Yes, you can move it while they're there. Also, if you just press Control R again, just on either edge, we're not actually gonna put this one on. Scroll your mouse wheel. You can add more edges just by scrolling the mouse wheel. Or make it a yellow cube. Or make it a yellow <laughs> cube. Exactly. And if you don't want to do it, you just alternate click. So if you've got left click set as your main, you'd left click, you'd right click, and vice versa the other way around. Um, great. So. What we're going to do now on the so we're looking at this cube straight on so if you press um one right now so so when we're talking about left and right on the model 
it's actually the other way around. So if you go to the Volcano model, this will make quick. more sense. Real quick, uh, I, I just got the notification that food is ready for me, so I'm going to have to pick that up. Otherwise, I'm going to hear it more. Um, okay. But I'll bring it to this scene real quick, and then I'm going to grab that food. I'll be right there. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we can continue. Let's go. Okay, so head back to your cube. My cube. So, on the, so beforehand, we were saying about how left is actually right and right is actually left because the character will be facing the other way from us. Yes. So when I refer to the left, when we're looking straight ahead of the character, you're actually selecting things on the right. So on the right I of the character, want you to select the right hand side, which is on the left. Right. So those four vertexes. So you're gonna have to rotate the camera ever so slightly because those are the two vertexes were hidden mm -hmm. behind those two. So when you selected those two, it didn't didn't right. choose to select the other ones. So there we go. Something we'll else you those. can do, I believe, is switch to wireframe and it'll grab everything because it doesn't do. Yes. Yeah. It you doesn't remember do... that? Hey, I do remember some, that. Some stuff stuck. Mm -hmm, for sure. But yes, you can press. Uh, Z or Z on the keyboard and that will give you a little menu which will allow you to change into four different modes which Blender can show. Those four different modes are also present up in the top right as buttons. Mm -hmm. uh, but wireframe, Whoops. you can see all the way through it. Where solid, you generally can't see all the way through it unless you turn the little option on. Rendered is already rendered but right now we haven't yeah, done so anything to use an ev renderer but we don't need that right now yeah so we've grabbed those four vertexes is a little bit of a... oh there's ads right now by the way oh yeah those oh. are annoying right now <laughs> those are a thing yeah well, we'll just wait till the adverts are done yeah <laughs> we give it a minute blah, 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 blah. Just a music break. There you go. This I'll be. Uh, this I won't be editing out of the video because that's too much. Uh, but hey, <laughs> you can skip ahead a minute and you'll be good. Yay! <laughs> I wish Blender had a cheat sheet for all these shortcuts. There are a few cheat sheets. Yeah, cheat sheets out of there. Um, Honestly, one of your best things will be to actually just make your own. Get a collection of the tools that you like using and just write it down. Because for modeling, there's actually not that many. There's a few, but there's not a ton. Yeah. Also, real quick, uh, the bird model is so cute. Thank you. This one was actually made by a, a friend of ours, Lim and Askel. We should have a little uh, a shout out in chat for, for Lim. Everybody go check out Liminaskal. They made the model. Also, Audex, I forgot to say thank you for the follow earlier, I think. Whoops. I had a food or something. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm on ADHD medication, but that doesn't get the it doesn't get rid of the ADHD. <laughs> How would it actually do for you then? Just just like settle it. Oh. I mean it, it, it helps. It helps hyper focus specifically. Oh. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um We can continue. The the the, the okay. ads are over. Sweet. So you've got those four vertexes. Press X on the keyboard. That's your delete. And we're going to delete those vertexes. Oof. Excellent. So now we've got half of a cube. Beautiful. Gorgeous. You are so far on your way to becoming a professional model. <gasps> wow! So, over to the right oh, it doesn't on the pro properties panel, you'll see there's something that looks like a spanner. A spanner? Um, the one above that. Oh, oh. oh that's, that's it there. Okay, I'm so Dutch. So this is our modifiers. Um, generally, when we're modeling, there's only ever going to really be two modifiers that we're going to use. And that is going to be the mirror and the subdivision. But mm -hmm. for now, we only need the mirror. So we turn the mirror on, and boom. Because we've set everything up properly, 
the mirror mm -hmm. basically works right in the center. All I want you to do on that modifier where it says clipping ticket. Yeah. So just to show the people in chat what clipping does, if you could unclip, like untick it for a second and grab it and pull it out. Oh, well, uh, that's because <laughs> not all of them are selected. There we go. So when clipping is off, it basically means that the model won't clip. It won't attach itself in the middle. However, if we deselect it and put clipping on, now you try and move it, it will always stay stuck in that halfway point. So when we're doing body modeling, you can understand why this is quite useful. It means you have to only make one foot and one hand. Exactly. Very, very useful. So, where does this want to be? Thank you, Gun Guns Butter, for the follow. Now, precious Pete. So, when we're modeling, mm -hmm. generally, we'll want to use the hips as our base of where we start the model from. Mm -hmm. So, what I'm going to get you to do is I'm going to get you to lift that cube up to the base. So, I grab with G, and with Z, with I move G. it upwards. Yes. Um, right here at the with the bottom. Hit. Yeah. So we'll, so we can, that way it can work. So we put that on the bottom now. That's now on the on the um. That's now on the bottom of the crotch. What we we'll want to do the top part of it. We we'll mm -hmm. want to bring that down to where the belly button would be. We want to bring the top to where the belly button but belly button is. Okay. If I just switch to this, that makes it, makes it easier to switch between the modes. So I grab those vertices, and with yep. Z, I move them down again, and then yeah, the belly to, button. About to where the belly button is, yeah. So now, on the outside of the <sighs> model, what I'm going to want you to do is to pull those vertexes in, so we're basically tracing the image at the background. So mm -hmm. if we look at it from the front, mm -hmm. and we pull, so we'll start with those top two, and we'll pull those in until they line up with the um, the image. So it might be useful to use the wireframe mod here. Right. Um, that was through, um, let's see, Z, Z, Z or Z. Um, and bring that in. And then... On the, oh, yeah, that was correct. On the that was correct. X. So the other thing is, if you actually click the middle mouse button while you're moving, um, I'm noticing the reference is slightly object. off. We can do. It doesn't matter if it's slightly off. Like it, uh, it needs to be mostly centered. But okay. We're only using this as a guide because obviously when we we know that the model where we're working on is perfectly mirrored. So. This is just to give us a, a good starting point. There. So there we go. Sweet. So when we're first putting this out, and this is like the same for anybody who's following along. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can see there it looks like a gold bar at the minute because yeah. it's quite long. But that we, we don't really want to be thinking about how long it is just yet. First, we want to fill in the spine and then the chest. Mm -hmm. So you got to pull that up just before it hits the pectorals. So you're going to press E on the keyboard. What is E? E is extrude. So this is going to create new geomet geometry from existing geometry. So you're going to pull that up to just below the pectorals. Uh, just below the pectorals. So like here? Or... No, that's a... Oh, yeah, there, like, that. There. like that. Yes. And then like what pit. we're going to do, we're going to press E again while that's still selected, and we're going to bring that up to the shoulder blades, to where the neck joins. There. There we go. And what I want you to do, zoom in a little bit, and you'll see that where the pectorals are, it actually pulls the model out a little bit. I think there's something odd happening. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, good. Um, uh, yeah. glad that I heard that immediately. <laughs> oh God. Um, why is that in a? I think something is odd. Let me grab a proper OST. 
How does that Let, happen? Yeah, um, I'm glad I was able to get away from that. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's absurd. That. Welcome to 3D modeling with Flint and Kate, everybody. <laughs> we, we, we have ourselves Thanks, a time. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to cute video game soundtrack YouTube nothing happened well. we don't need to talk about what just almost <laughs> happened fortunately nothing bad happened and we can move on <laughs> smiles good old okay. automatic <laughs> shenanigans um <laughs> put on shuffle oh my goodness gracious we <laughs> have a time here it's beautiful okay so okay so we're gonna select the side of it and we're gonna pull um where the pectorals are mm -hmm. we're still looking just directly at the front we're still looking just directly at the front okay uh so, so press a mm -hmm. so this is select all so whenever you press a it will select all yes now double tap a that's a deselect. So if you tap here, it'll select everything. If you double tap here, it will deselect everything. Okay. So now we just want to select those two vertexes to the side of the chest, um, just to pull them out a bit. So these. Yes. And then pull and them just out. Pull those out a little bit to the side. That's it. It's interesting how it's slightly off causing. Hmm. If you want to move the image, we can still move the image. It's yeah. just an object in the scene. Yeah. So if we just get out of edit mode uh, and into object mode. Okay. And now if you go onto the actual image itself, we can just move the image using G. Okay. Uh, let me use this as the way to do that okay so um g on g. the x-axis interesting i think the the image is just not uh fully um symmetrical uh, it should be but not quite Let's see. Because it is approximately on the belly button, weirdly enough. Um, and if any more to the left yet, yeah, this is ex this is definitely squarely yeah. in the middle. So yeah. okay, sweet. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, um, just for the sake of, um, this, I think it's easiest to make sure that the belly button lines up completely center. Uh. there and then i can move uh so i go good. back to ob uh so we've got to click onto the object first cube and, and then go tab. into edit mode and then i can move this to this spot i think right yeah exactly Oops. there we go all right well we'll, right. Just, we'll just work with this this is just how it'd be so, next up, um, I might find you an image. Are you confident with your knowledge of how somebody looks from the side? Or do you, do you would you like a reference image? I think I'll be okay from? with how someone looks from the side. You think you'll be okay? Yeah. Okay, so now we've got those three main sections. And this is why we call it blocking out. We're working in big blocks. We've got mm -hmm. the hips, we've got the spine, and we've got the chest. Mm -hmm. From the side, we're just going to be focusing on the hips and the chest because wherever we move those, the, the spine will also adjust as well. So we only really need to focus on those. So if you want to go to your side view. Okay. So you'll want to bring those um back out remember you do have the vulcan model as well um if you want to reference what that looks from like from the side mm, yeah so the butt sticks out 
the spine goes in and the chest is also fairly prominent as well obviously mm -hmm. this is a stylized model it doesn't entirely follow full-on uh anatomy one-to-one -one, but <laughs> flint is learning what muscles are <laughs> <laughs> mum shoulders mum shoulders but yeah so we just want to basically recreate that same shape with these with these bits there for now okay so so we want to pull it all in preferably um so shall i so what i would do here is because this model was centered um we want to work on that origin point i think you've already figured it out as well we want to scale this so we're going to hit scale i did which it is s on our keyboard yeah i'm on s scale it in so That's i clicked it. s and yeah and then r specifically on the y axis um, yes I think this is about correct. Yeah, from this I think we can work. Yeah, that actually looks fairly well. So, what you'll probably want to do is pull the top line, not the top line, sorry. The So, if we think of the bottom line, first, second, and then top. So, the the bottom line is the bottom of the hips. The second, mm -hmm. the, fir uh, the first line is the first cut. Second line is second cut and top. So, we want to pull um, the back vertex is just in a bit. So you want to pull them uh, all in a bit? No, no, just on the first and second cut. On the first and second cut. That's it. So just pull those in. There we go. Boom! That's as much as we can do. So now, <laughs> woo! We're kind of getting limited as well. Um, so with 3D modeling, when we're blocking something out, we want to work with as little geometry as possible for as long as we can until we definitely need to add some more. So the only other thing we can, we can do here as well is if you grab the first and second coat at the front and pull it out just ever so slightly. Not as much as the back, but just a little bit. There we go. So, the first thing that you can probably notice is, well, the butt doesn't really look like a butt, does it? It just right. looks like, looks looks flat. So we're going to add a loop cut there, which is Control R, which is something we've already used. Uh, where? Control R. Oh yeah. To here and or? No, it's that way. That's it there. And now round that buttocks. So <sighs> round. Just want to grab that Just on the X, on the Y axis. Yeah. So if you're actually on the side view, when if you're in front view, side view, or top view, when you move something, it will automatically be locked to um, to one of the uh, brain. <laughs> you got this. Uh, I was going to say dimensions, but it's not dimensions. They. <laughs> God damn it. I've done this for so long. I should know this. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Every now and then, just a word uh, drops from your mind. It's fine. The X, Y, Z. The axis. That's axis, it. My yes. brain. Axis. Uh, it'll automatically lock it to one of the axes. So mm -hmm. the other two, it can move around freely, but the, the one that you're looking from, it can't. Mm -hmm. So we've added that in. We've made um, that part of our bit more round. Mm -hmm. Next one. We'll do the same for the chest, because the chest also follows the same same rules. So So we add another loop cut. Oh, whoops. Oh, I right clicked it. I right clicked and it placed it in the, exactly in the center. Interesting. Yeah. It'll always press it in the center if you right click away from it. It's only if you left click it. I did that instinctually. Pull... That's, that's great. Like okay. I said, eventually you'll learn stuff. So you just want to pull not that part out just yet. Because that's actually what's called a clavicle. That's where this will set. Um, it's mm -hmm. the back part we want to pull out just a little bit. Because we want to round that out. Um, and that's scaling. So it's whoops. G we want to press. There we go. Okay. So it's the other way we actually want to pull it. We want to pull it out. That's it. There we go. 
Mm -hmm. And so you can already kind of see it um, coming around. So now, spin around it. Spin around this object that we've made. Hmm, very cube, isn't it? It's Minecraft-esque. Woo! Cube. So, what we're going to want to do, first of all, we're going to add a loop cut down the middle of it from the side. So if we go to the side view, and we add a loop cut straight down the middle. Oh. So, the reason we added those um, edges in before is can you see how this loop cut follows along with the middle of the shape that we've just made? So you can see it's not just a straight line down. It's, it actually tries to find the exact half point of every edge. That's why we wanted to do this, because we want to get that nice shape in there beforehand. Because we, we're lazy, we want to make it as easy as possible when we're working on this stuff. So, yeah. that's there. That's nice and fine. So, if you rotate around the model a little bit. So I'm going to call them the corner edges. So we've got two edges there that run down the corner of the model from top to bottom, right? Mm-hmm. And how do you think we want to move those so that they look more natural? Uh, I think we want to pull them out a little bit so that they're... so that's a bit more rounded. Yes, exactly. So, if you want to press Alt and then click on one of the edges... So what Alt does whenever you click on it is it selects the entire loop. Mm -hmm. So that, that edge there, we actually want to leave alone because if we go to the front view, we know that that edge trails along with the, with the drawing exactly as it is, right? Right. So it's the other two edges that we want to move. It's the edges there and there, correct. Whoops. There you go. I use so, the sh I use the shift key to uh, to select multiple. Yes, you do. It's also just generally like a thing that you can do with computers. Um, the shift or control key is usually to select multiple. It's nice. Yeah. So you'll want to pull those inwards to the model a little bit, okay. and then you want to shrink them in towards each other. So we're going to use the G just to pull them in. So just press G. Mm hmm and pull it into the bottle of it. Into the bottom? Into the model. Into in it towards the middle. That's it. On the X axis. There we go. Uh, let me put we'll it leave here. that about there for now. Yep. Now we're gonna go to our side view. And those same two edges we just had selected. Mm-hmm. We're gonna select them again. Okay. Uh, let me do this. Thank you, Blender. Very cool. And what there. we're going to get you to do is to press S on the keyboard. Mm-hmm. And to scale them in towards each other. So, that's all good. And lock it onto an axis. So that's there you it. go. The there Y axis. Like that? Uh, like that. There we go. Now spin round it. Boom, that's looking a bit more natural. So from there, what I can tell is that the model overall is still too wide from the front to the back. Mm -hmm. So if we select the whole thing by pressing A and just scale it on that same axis again. There we go. And that's a bit more natural. So we might want to pull those two corner edges out just a little bit more for now. Because it's giving the edge a really sharp, uh, a sharp point. So... So if you click on the middle of an edge, it will select the, the entirety of that edge. That's yeah. it. So pull those out just a little bit. Uh, what axis? Um, along the X. So we're pulling it out of the model. Whatever I say out or in, sorry, what I'm referring to generally is towards the center of the model. So if I say outwards, I mean and pull away from the center. If I say inwards, it's towards the center. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to add, guess what? Another loop cut. <gasps> Where? So this one's going to go straight down the chest. 
so we want it to go on the vertical so from top to bottom yeah. but we're not just going to add one we're going to add two that's it then all right and now i'm going to introduce you to a tool which makes your job a lot easier so <gasps> press a and now we're going to look over to the left. You'll notice I've actually been not really talking too much about the tools on the side of your uh, on the side of your panel here. Yeah. There is one tool which I will use religiously, and that is the smooth tool. So if you look towards the bottom where the pink tools are, you'll see that there's one which is smooth tool. Smooth. So click click onto that, and that's now added a little yellow pin. Mm -hmm. So, pull on that pin. Mmm, smooth. Bean. So it's smoothed it out for us. Yeah, but it's also making the shapes here a little bit less... Pronounced, pronounced. yeah. But that's fine, because that's going to bring us on to my next tool, which I'm going to introduce to. So... Grab one of the vertexes. We just want to grab one vertex here on the boat. Uh, the ones towards the outside. Uh, maybe the other one. Maybe the one next to that one. That one there. That's yeah. it. Okay. So, towards the center top mm -hmm. of your screen, you'll see it says global. Then there's two little uh, pivot... There's two little puffer point bits. This is at the top center of your screen. That's it there. Um, and I'm moving across. You've already found it because you probably already remember it. We're going to turn on a thing called proportional editing. So click that. Mm -hmm. So now press G. Do you see that circle that's appeared? Yes. That circle represents influence. So if you now pull that vertex... So you've double tapped G there, which will actually ignore it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Just single tap G. Just single tap G and pull. There you go. So that is proportional editing. Um, and now if you scroll on the wheel, you can make it more or less. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to use this to almost form the shapes again because we've lost them with the with the smooth tool which i kind of wanted you to go through because i want i want you to kind of fill with a few things <laughs> so that we can fix it oh because these are common things that you'll come across when you're actually doing models so you want to pull the book back out and the top of the chest back out and the front part of the spine out again if i like this. Um. Whatever feels natural for you, really. There. And then. The same there. And then the same with the, with the front of the spine as well. So that's just above the belly and just below the pectoral. And, uh, okay. And it also, oh, whoops, also like both, then. Yeah, so push those in a little bit. And then oh. also at the front as well. So one thing you could do here is actually select the whole edge. Um, the two middle cuts, you could probably select both of those and just pull the whole thing forwards. Mm hmm. So you've currently got a vertical selected, right? Yeah, I've got basically these we, two... Uh, we could got... select the two horizontal cuts going through the center of the model and push it all forwards. Okay. So, like, this. Yes, exactly. Exactly. There you go. Because the front of the body, remember, isn't a flat shape. It actually curves. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a bean. So, yeah. there we go. So... Congratulations, torso's made. That's Woo! as basic as the torso can get. Um, what we're going to do next is we're going to add the legs. So the process generally when it comes to 3D modeling, at least what I found over years of doing this, mm -hmm. is torso first, then legs, then arms, then head, 
then hands, and often I'll just do the feet with the legs as well. But, Shake that booty. Yeah. So, we're going to look under the model. We're going to look at the underside. That is with the uh, Control 7. That's correct. So, whenever we're making limbs or anything that's round, generally we want either six or eight vertexes to go around it. Now, six is only ever used at really low polygon counts, mm -hmm. but because this will eventually be a fairly reasonably uh, high poly count, we're going to need eight vertexes for the leg. We are also going to want to make sure that there is room for the actual crotch area so that when the legs split, that they're not pulling on it. Each other so we're going so, to select those eight vertexes there yeah select the middle one as well the middle one as well okay yeah so that selects all the faces all right so now look to the press one on the keyboard to look at the front and now we're just going to pull this leg down to the knees so press e e that's it and pull it down to the knees Not quite there, whoops. So I'll let you figure out what you need to do. There. That's there. And you want to pull them in so that they basically kind of like uh, hover over the legs. Also, the proportional editing is still on, and I think that that's an issue. Uh, you've, because we're doing this in solid view, you haven't selected the the um, vertexes behind the face. Oh, okay. That's it. There you go. That is important. All the faces? I sure hope they are. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Just to make sure that that's all safe. I grab it. Is proportional editing not a problem? No, it won't be a problem because the influence is so small, it's not affecting the the, um, the vertexes above. Oh, right. But there we go. And now we want to grab those same vertexes. Now, are we going for a planty grade? Which I would probably recommend since we're starting off new. Or do you want to go risky and go I for the planty grade? Think, I think uh, uh, digitigrade is what we're going to be doing. So you're going digigrade. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to pull your attention back to the Vulcan, then. Um, so, the Vulcan is a what I'll probably recommend for you to attempt to, attempt to do with the uh, Digigrade, because it's more typical of a model. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you're going to edit mode, and then look at the side of the, of the leg. On the Vulcan, sorry. Oh. Yeah. So you'll see how the f the top leg is actually fairly normally balanced. It's mm -hmm. actually kind of where a leg would normally sit on a human. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the back leg and the foot that actually give that give us that curve. So mm -hmm. what we're going to do on your model is we're going to pull that knee forwards, mm -hmm. and then we're going to when we extrude the lower leg we're going to pull that back a little bit further than would feel natural and okay. then we're going to pull down the foot okay i think for the sake of like um because if i'm going to go with something that i want to create it's probably going to be something in the direction of my bird character um right. okay. and if i do that i would likely um like if I were, I, I would move so this. So for pushing it further, there's a slightly different way we'll want to approach it. Okay. So I would move it up a little bit as well to give so more. So move it up a little bit and mm -hmm. move it forwards. Okay. Oh, that's not right. There we go. Just a little bit. And then move it forward. Just move it forwards as well. We're going to move it forwards a fair amount for the digi leg. Okay. How are we going to do this this time? So press and G and just move it forwards oh. for now. Oh, that's double tap. So whenever you double tap G, just mm -hmm. so you know, that, that what that gives you is edge slide, which allows you to slide a vertex over and across. But it doesn't work if you, only want, if you want to move whole things. It's only really for one or two vertexes at a time. <laughs> yeah. So that's there. So click that there. 
Mm -hmm. Is that, is that now, good? Now, normally, we would extrude straight down. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to rotate it about 30 degrees so that the front part is further down than the back part. Okay. So to do that, we're going to press R, which is our rotate tool. So do I first s s put it down and then rotate? Yeah, yeah, you put it down and then you rotate. There. I think it's so about right there, yeah. So now we're going to extrude again. So we're going to pull it out. Also, hello, Ritual Neo. I hope you're doing well. And what we're going to do, we're going to put it about there, and then we're going to pull it back even further. And grab. That's it. And now we're going to rotate the back part. This part, if we're re referring to the self, because even when you've got digigrade characters, they actually still follow the exact same anatomy as humans. It's just they stand on their tiptoes instead of actually on their full foot. So this is the heel of the foot. Yes. So we're going to rotate this. So where would the feel heel on a digigrade character be pointing? Um, oh, that would be away from the character. That's it. So we're going to rotate it even further than that. Usually this is actually fairly flat. That's it there. And this is why this is a slightly different method to uh, doing the plantigrade. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add an edge cut. An edge cut? An edge loop, sorry. So control and R. And then we're going to click it. And then we're going to drag it down a little bit further up, a little bit further up, because we want a little bit of uh, density to our foot. So click that there. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So now look from the front. And what we're going to want to do, we want to kind of refine this shape a bit. So we're going to grab, um, go into your uh, wireframe thought mode. Wireframe? And just select the entire bottom of the heel of the foot. The entire just pull bottom of the heel. I think that yeah. is... All of it. Just basically all of it. That's it. And pull it all in. So it's a bit closer in. Like that? That's it. And now just for the actual back part, we're going to want to pull that in a little bit because obviously it's a little bit bendy right now. Mm -hmm. So just the back vertex is now. That's it. That's it there. I just pull those inwards a little bit as well. So G and in. There we Is go. It? Perfect. Right. Those two front faces. So do you see that how we've got that loop going around? And now we're going to want to grab those two front faces. Because if we're thinking that the back of that is mm -hmm. the heel of our foot we're going to want to actually make the central part of the foot as well now so we're going to make that from those two front faces there so if we go back into solid and see them on the front of the model there and we're going to hit extrude so e and we're going to bring them down to the ground level so if you bring it down right Okay, so very useful whenever we're flattening objects out. So if you just release that there, obviously we want to make this flat with the ground for now. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, S, Z, zero. And that will make sure that it is completely flat with the ground. There. There we go. Perfect. And now, obviously, we want to make maybe you'd want to maybe refine the actual shape of these legs now, because as we go forward, we're going to add more detail. We're going to add more uh, information, which means it becomes a bit harder to work with. Mm -hmm. So what I would do, select, um, select the ball of the no, sorry, select the heel of the foot, and select the knee and go to use the smooth tool and smooth it out. It will lose some of the shape, but we'll bring it back. These three? Uh, all of it. Basically, all of all of the 
Well, all of the heel and all of the knee. That's all of it. it. Okay. And we've already still got our smooth tool selected, so we just pull on that pin. So maybe not too far, because now you'll see that's removed a lot of the shape. But about there. Yeah. Because obviously we want these legs to be nicely shaped. Yeah. Um, right. Store. So, last bit. We want to add the toes, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so we add another loop cut to the extrusion that we made from the heel of the foot to the ball. Mm -hmm. That's it. We add that there. And those front two faces yet again, we extrude outwards from there. Okay. Oh, hold on. Ooh, made a little mistake. There. There we go. And then... And so this is just the toes of the foot, so it won't actually be that long. Because this will only ever actually be the toes. Think of a bird, for example. Then again, actually, with a bird, they can be quite long. They no, they're they're decently long sized, like, like this. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then bring it down just so it sits on the level. The thing with bird feet is also kind of that, um, at least with the way I do them, like they have the little grabby feet. Um, yeah. uh, let me do this. There we go. Um, is that the toes kind of like start like from already up here already? Yeah. Okay. So you would just split them a little further up. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so if they start much further up, uh, I believe there was a was there a bird character I worked on before? Because uh, I would like to show you some topology. Because bird feet are a little bit more complex than they are. Um, usual feet. But for now, we're just blocking out, and I don't want to get the lesson too stuck on just feet. Yeah. So what we'll do, we'll call that good for now. That's yeah, sounds good. essentially the block out of our feet and our legs. Yeah. So the next part, the arms. Very much the same process mm -hmm. um, where we pull out. The only thing we don't, the only thing we really ignore with the arms is shoulders. So we pull out the bicep, we pull out the um, lower arm, the hand, and then eventually the fingers. Okay. Oh. Okay. So. A quick drink while you do this. All good. So we take these. We extrude. Um. But also we should have something for the shoulders. I feel. Yeah. So we don't want. We don't want the actual extrusion to be the shoulders we will eventually come back to the shoulders because the way that i found shoulders easiest to put in mm -hmm. is to basically rip them out <laughs> which is the actual name of the tool it's called a rip tool okay like that Pretty much, pretty much. The only thing is, we will want another edge loop across the middle of the whole thing, uh, because we're currently we've only got six vertexes going around the arm. We'll mm. want about eight. Okay, so like that. That's it. Yeah, correct. And now, guess what? Grab your smooth tool and it'll Ooh. smooth it for you. <sighs> smooth. I know that the smooth tool isn't the easiest to use when you're starting out, so maybe it's not the best thing to introduce people to, but if you get competent with it, it saves you a lot of time because you'll eventually learn how it smooths things out and you'll be like, okay, I can just get the general block out done and then the smooth does the rest of it for me. Shall I adjust this so that it like, makes sense for the arm, or...? So, for the hand, I would flatten that out. So, select the whole thing. Scale. And X. And then zero. And this will work as well to flatten that. There we go. Mm-hmm. 
And so hands, I'm gonna leave hands for a second because hands are fairly complex. So right. we're gonna go for the head. Now, so you're going for a bird head, right? Yeah. What type of bird? Because the type of bird head will make a difference. It does make a difference. The thing is, um, so I, I consider my own bird uh, to be like the, the cross between a kingfisher and a parrot. But really, yes. in the end, it's just me cheating a bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if we're making it like your own mm -hmm. um, head, you have a reference of your own character, I don't you? I do. It might be worth bringing that in when we approach the head. Yeah. It might be worth bringing that in for the rest of the body, to be honest. All right. Um, we can replace them. We should be able to replace the uh, the reference, I guess. You could do. I would just hide it. I always like whenever I'm working on something, I'll have two references. I'll have the anatomy one, and I'll have the one that I've either drawn myself or that's a reference sheet from somebody else. Hmm. Um, the reason being is reference sheets don't always show the anatomy very well, and two D artists like to cheat a lot. Was it? Oh, how did you add stuff again? So it is uh, Shift A. Shift A. So uh, we're in edit mode right now, so it's only going to uh, add okay. mesh bits. So we want to be in object mode. Uh, image. An reference. Image reference. This one is in a specific art. Uh, bird art. Uh, let's see. Rough sheet. No bits. So there we go. Oh. So That's you'll see it's it. added at a slightly different angle. Do you know mm. why that was? Um, because I had it, uh, I was facing it incorrectly. I was... Uh... Yes. The reference sheet will always come in at the angle that your camera is facing. So you want to press one on the keyboard and then add it. I'm sorry. I let you fail with that. I, 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 you saw what you did. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to teach you a lesson <laughs> but technically you should yeah. also be able to rotate it uh, rotate it to uh you could to match do it. but honestly quicker to do with it is where <laughs> okay da, da, da. Oh, image reference and yeah, you actually this... already still have it selected if you see do you see how it's oh, in yeah, the name right. title there there you go and now it's, there you go it's properly angled there you go and as you can see there's no silly bits on it that can get me cancelled on Twitch. <laughs> so, we want to do Actually, the same thing. We'll bring that up. I mean, we could just go off that model, that reference sheet, if you wanted. If that's what you want to model to, we might as well just use this reference sheet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll move it up real quick. Bird feet hard to draw, grr. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. I'm going to want to pull the image reference sheet behind a bit. Yes. And now here's the wonderful thing. We can actually hit uh, Shift D on that reference sheet. And we've now made another one. So now we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees. So R90. Yeah. Uh, on the Z. Oh, so shifty. Shifty. Rotate. Uh, 90 Z. Uh, oh, 90 and then Z can be done afterwards? Okay, interesting. Yeah, it can be done afterwards. Those inputs can be done in any... Well, obviously not the rotate, but the number and the axis it's angled to can be set. Whoa, what the fuck what happened there? Um, you... I wanted will... to grab it immediately, I but I think... I'll do it again. So, Shift D, rotate, 90, Z, press enter. It's done. There okay. we go. Now I can grab now we, things. we can put that one to the side. So when we've got our side view, we can put the side view there. Let me first put it back. There we go. And away. Interesting. Um, so it needs to be rescaled first as well. So from the front view, go to the front view as well. Ah, the front view is really small as well. 
Yeah. So scale the model to fit the reference sheep for now. Oh, okay. So if you click onto the model just in general, and just press S, because our origin point is right at the middle, it makes it really easy to work with. That's it. There we go. Right, before we go any further though, mm -hmm. select the model again. And just let me check, because it's something I do a lot myself, but I don't actually know. Yeah, so it's, yeah. Okay, so press Control A. Mm -hmm. So this has brought up the apply. We've just scaled it in object mode, which means that that scale won't be set at once. So if you actually click off the apply menu for now, so it goes away, press N on your keyboard. Do you see there where it says scale at yeah. 668? So what we want to do is we want to apply the scale. We want to say, no, the scale it's currently at is our default. This isn't... Right. So this if is, this is currently... Model, currently it's saying basically the, si the, the model that should be larger has been fully scaled down within the scene as an object. While yes. we want to have the model itself be smaller yeah. within yeah. itself. So, if we select onto the model, mm -hmm. and then press Control A, and then apply the scale, you'll see that scale is set to 1 now. Uh -huh. So, its default size now is the size we've just made it. Okay. So, if we ever size or resize things in uh, object mode, mm -hmm. you want to watch your scales. Um, it's something that... In Blender, because Blender's very good, Blender will work fine if everything's got random scales. Mm -hmm. Unity, however, does not like it when things are at different scales. It would affect things like your fizz bones, uh, spring bones, it'll affect things like your animation speeds. It, it all piles up, but it's all technical, and it's all stuff that affects the end of it, so you don't always... Hmm. Yeah, I'm always too aware of it as a problem. So that's why now I'm trying to instill within you, Flint, mm -hmm. that if you scale something in object mode, immediately apply the scale. Just, it saves you having to fault find later on. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. wondering so I'm wondering right now, because um, I wonder what height things are going to be. Um, because right now, the way I've got things set, the legs are a lot shorter than what we have on the model we've made so far, which yeah. means my model is not as tall as the average anatomy. Yeah. So, when it comes to... We're not really focused on an animation model here, because if it's an animation model, proportions can be whatever, because mm -hmm. you're making the rig for within Blender. Mm -hmm. When we're making them for Unity, however, mm -hmm. we want to kind of keep a note on what actual proportions it's looking for. Mm -hmm. But, saying that, you can completely make the rig however you want it to fit. You've just got to bear in mind that, obviously, the more distorted from a typical human rig that something goes, the more likely some of the animations are going to look a little jank. It's right. not going to break them, just might make them look a little jank. Mm -hmm. um, so in this case, you can easily bring the hips, hips down to fit the model, to fit the reference sheet better. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. Because I feel like that maybe maybe I need to change the 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 ref sheet, um, but like that's something I can't can't do right now for this stream. But you know, yeah, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so the main reason we brought this in for the head was for the head. So let's keep our focus on the head of the model. All right. So go into the model itself and let's go into edit mode. Uh, yes, uh, model and edit mode. So we're gonna go to the neck now. So zoom into where the neck would be. Oh, real quick. Um, these should be uh, at a lower opacity. 
just makes it easier if you're on your eyes. You're on the right one. I'll pass this just over there to the left. Oh, to the yeah. right, sorry. I think it's just nicer in general. Yeah. Also, because if the rev sheet is white uh, in the background, which means that these are going to be hard to see. Uh, and I think that's very important as well. So this way, this the uh, the screen keys will remain visible, even on a white background. Yeah. There we go. There. So, front of the cube, um, we want to look at the neck now. The neck. The neck. The necky. Ne necky wecky. It's a thick neck on the ref sheet, then. Okay, so if we're following along with the ref sheet, mm -hmm. basically select all the vertexes that you can that mm -hmm. would fill in the neck. So there's probably... You're going to want to leave one to the side for the shoulder. Yeah. So that one there, that edge that you've just hovered over, that's for the shoulder. So this is just for the neck. So we're going to mm -hmm. pull that up. So extrude that up to the chin. And you'll notice the neck is really thin. So what tool are we going to use to pull it out? Um, I would say scale, probably. So scale, or we can use move with proportional editing on. So if we grab that, and we just grab, there we go. And you can see how that's actually moved all of it over for us. Mm -hmm. And how we're almost getting the shoulder form already as well, just from that. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the arms are starting to get a bit warped. The arms will want to keep in a good T pose for now. Right. So I want to pull those arms down just so they're a bit more level. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we want it to be kind of level. So if we turn proportional editing off, that's it. There we go. And there we are. So, on the neck, select the top parts, which we, what we've just extruded. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, extrude this up to the top of the head. Now, remember, you've got uh, that feather that comes back, so that's not really, like, the physical top of it isn't the drawing top of it. So, yeah, it's about there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what I want us to do next is to select those faces around the model. Oh, let me grab this. makes more sense. Yeah, that does make a lot more sense. Mm hmm So... What I'm going to ask you to do now, we're going to move out of Vertex Select because Vertex Select is going to have an issue here. So select. So before you change, actually, stay on Vertex Select because I want to show this to other people as well. Mm -hmm. So select the top part of the head and the bottom part of the head together. That's it. So if you press Extrude now, so press E and scale it outwards. Mm hmm you'll see how at the top it's retained only one face hmm. what we want to do here is we want to add ourselves more faces to work with so if we undo that mm -hmm. and we're going to go to face select and we're just going to select the four faces around the model that's it and now we're going to hit extrude and there we go you can see now that once you click, we've got more topology on the top of the head. No, that was fine. That was fine. Oh, 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 oh. Too far. Too yeah. far. <laughs> okay, extrude. Extrude. That's it. And then just scale it outwards as well. So click it there. And scale on that section there. There you go. Is this correct? Yeah, that's correct, because now we've got the top of the head, and we've now got the side. And guess what we're going to use again? We're going to use our smooth tool. So oh. just use the smooth tool directly from here. Because you've got the pin, we just want to pull on the pin. Head. Head. There we go. Ah, so head. And add a loop cut down the center of it. Uh, that's like it. this? Oh, no, yeah. 
Yep, 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 yep. There we are. Okay. Pull it out a little bit, so we're rounding that shape out. Uh, scale? Uh, scale, move, grab, whichever one's most comfortable. This is the thing. Scale, rotate, and move. It's just whichever one works for you. So there we go. And once again, we might want to smooth the head out a little bit. There we go, and you've got your reference. So proportional editing is really useful for this stage. So if we go to, whenever we're doing proportional editing, mm -hmm. generally you want vertex select, and you want to select a single vertex at a time. It just makes it much more easy to control. That's it there. And now we want to look for the side. So if you press three, mm -hmm. you can see where the rest of the model is on the uh, reference sheet. So we'll probably want to pull the whole model back. So press A and then press G and just pull it back. That's it. There we go. Mm -hmm. And so now do you see where the jawline is? Where the bottom of the face is? And you yeah. see how it's kind of curved upwards? Mm -hmm. Now, it would be curved the other way, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what we want to do, grab that center vertex uh, on, on the neck, on the jawline. Oh, here. Yeah. Um, go right to vertexes. From where you were, where that is. Mm hmm. Yeah, here? So you're on the center line. No, so no. One more. One more. Oh, just here. There oh, okay. Go. I there thought for some reason oh. I was thinking the front. Yeah. Okay. And then we want to pull this down. Oh. With proportional editing, or? Uh, reduce the impact of your proportional editing. You can keep it on, but we just want to reduce the impact of it. I pull it down a little bit more because remember this is like kind of circular. So, that's it. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, mm -hmm. if we rotate around the model and then go to solid view, just so we've got a clearer view of how the form of the model looks, just so people can see and so you can see. Um, let's see. That is solid. Z and solid and then front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There we go. Well, how long has this music been going? Is this a 30? These are 30 minute <laughs> fucking look. We've been listening to the same music for 20 minutes. <laughs> You're not having luck with music today, are you? I'm having a great day. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering like, huh? I mean, I like, guess I like this music, but yeah, you know, um, I mean, it, it works. It was actually kind of neat little focus music. Let's see. No, it wor worked for 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, maybe not this one. Sure, let's, uh, let's have it on this for a bit. We could just like go forward whenever we want. Okay, cool. Yeah, sweet. So, very roughly, this is the very basic of a block out. Mm -hmm. like, We've got like you can recognize this as a figure now right like mm -hmm. might not be very refined but that's a figure so that's our block out done so now we're going to start to refine it a little bit mm -hmm. so the first thing i would say is the neck could probably use another <laughs> yeah i noticed that yeah so if we want to add another oh. loop to the neck i just pressed three that's not good okay oh well, that changed it to one three oh. is actually what we want just okay so control and r adds our um edge looping whoa okay there we go and just scale it in uh oh 
In its entirety? Yeah, I would just scale the whole thing. Whoops. There you go. And mm -hmm. just look from the front. So, the one thing about the head here is you'll see that the front of the head only really has one face. Mm -hmm. So we're going to want to add another edge loop. And we're going to add that down the center of the model. Is that? That's it there. Yeah. So the one thing with that is that's now added an edge loop all the way down the model. Not just on the head, but it's added it down the center point of the model. Right. Now that's actually okay because we actually do want a fair amount of definition on the chest and the torso. Mm -hmm. So we can get away with that. But if we add any more edge loops in, we're going to have to be careful with it. Um, and we'll start using a thing called terminations. But for now, that's still fine. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you to do... Mm -hmm. is put it into um, wireframe mode so we can see through the model. And so there's a beak, right? There's a beak. And so that beak's going to want extruded out of the model, right? Right. So how do you think we'd go about that? I want to know what you think we would do. So this is an interesting one because the beak clearly is... Um, interesting. It's rounded and sort of, but also it's like rounded triangular, um, making it a bit of an interesting shape. But I think right now it'd be okay to just grab, take these boxes and, and pull them out. Yeah, exactly. So grab those boxes and pull them out. Now make sure those boxes are connected, because it might not be. <laughs> Wireframe mode has this wonderful thing of trying to select through the model, which is useful in some cases, but not in all. There we go. And so pull that out. And it's... I would scale it down. That's kind of how I would approach it, because obviously the beak comes towards at a point, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. So grab those two front faces, that's it, and just scale. You don't even have to lock it into an axis, just scale it down. And then lift it up. Oh, yeah. And there we go. Mm-hmm. And... You can already see there. We've already actually got the edge loop already there for the break in the beak as well. Yeah. But what we want to do, where the where the lips would be, we're going to want to pull those vertexes outwards a little bit so that they're more rounded with the face, right? Mm-hmm. So if you want to do that. So we'll grab that vertex and pull it out. So you're in currently in face select. And it might be easier to do this in uh, solid mode at the moment. Okay. There we go. So just grab that um, where the lip would be and where the beak would be. We want to smooth that section out. Oh. So we're just going to pull that section out. Like this. Like that? Yeah, and pull it out. Excellent. Now, the vertex in the middle and on the top of the beak, that's the one. Pull that one up. Uh, I think for this, I want to take a look at wireframe mode. That's it. Mm -hmm. And now you might want to pull the side vertex in a little, because we might, might want to just trace directly over the um, image that's there. The side just to mark? give us that shape. Mm -hmm. Like this one? Yep. And um, pull that one in. Like there that. we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. You're getting it. There you go. And so go into solid view again, because I want to see the tip of the snoot. Tip of the, I was going to call it a snoot then. <laughs> um, and we'll want to do the same with the, with the tip, but on a smaller scale. Okay. So that one vertex there is fine. This one? Yes, yeah, so if we bring that one up a little, 
It might not follow your reference sheet for now, but just... Is that? Yep, bring that there. Because we're trying to think this in a 3D shape, right? So really think of how your beak is going to look, right? Mm -hmm. So that's currently coming straight out. But we've you already identified that it's a smooth curve inwards, right? Right. So we want that to be further in than the vertex behind it. So inwards towards the center of the model. Right. There we go. You see what I mean? Yes. How it's all following along? Yeah. And we'll do the same on the bottom corner as well. Hold on, we're gonna move this in a bit. The bottom corner? Uh, this one. That one, yeah. So we can push that one in, and then the one on the on the actual where the beak hits the head, we can pull that one out a little bit as well. Because remember, some of this can be pulled over by textures as well. Like that, maybe? Yeah. All right. All right. Perfect. There we go. Hi, BB. Hi, Casey. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> okay, so... I love them. What we're going to do now is we're going to um, go to the front view and we're mm -hmm. going to look at the eyes, your beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes. Okay. So can you tell which face is probably going to be more suited for your eye? That one. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. So go into the wireframe mode just so we can look at the reference behind it. You'll notice how I'm going a lot between solid view ref and, and wireframe. The reason that I tend to direct you to do this is because when we want to look at the model behind, mm -hmm. we want to get information from it. We want to be in wireframe, but then when we actually start moving the model and want to refine it itself, mm -hmm. um, we go back into solid mode. Okay. Because obviously the reference is 2D. It can only take so far. Mm -hmm. um, and at some point we've got to go, right, done with the reference. Now I need to actually look at what the shape is itself. I'm not yeah. relying on the reference too much. I want to look at the shape. So mm -hmm. if that face is the best for our eye, we want to we want to re redo the vertexes so they actually fit around the corners of the eye. Let's see, because I think what I'm going to be doing then is make sure that there's a bit of a, a diagonal shape to it instead. Can do, or, yeah. Like that. That or... Well, there's got to be space around it. There we go. Again, it's not going to perf line up perfectly because it's a square. So mm -hmm. right. square ain't going to go over us. The square doesn't go into the circle hole. It does not. <laughs> but the but the sphere does go into the sphere into the square <laughs> hole. Yeah. Where does the semicircle go? That's right. In the square. Into, the, into the square. Into the square hole. hole. Yeah, yeah. No. Good job. <laughs> no, no, please. No. <laughs> please. <laughs> I love that so much. Yeah. So we're going to solid. So we've we've said that now. We put mm -hmm. a, we've put our eye in the place that we want to on the drawing, but now we want to see how it actually looks in 3D. So now we're going to go to solid view. All right. So. So how do you say that looks so far? Uh, it's on its way. <laughs> so, what I would recommend is we want to pull the side parts of that uh, where the eye face will go backwards. Yeah. That's it. And what I'm also going to do is mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to go to the side view. Mm-hmm. 
And what I'm going to get you to do, down the midpoint, so down the direct center of the model, I want you to grab the three vertexes in the middle of the head. So like these? No, 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 down the midpoint, sorry. So from top to bottom, from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. And I want you to grab that vertex where your cursor is there, the one above it and the one below it. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. And now I'm going to get you to press Control and plus on your numpad. Oh. What? <clears throat> Hold on. Plus on the numpad. Oh, I see. I see, I see. And that has expanded your selection. The <sighs> inverse of that is control and minus on the numpad. That makes sense. That would reduce your selection. But the reason I want you to grab all of that mm -hmm. is because if we look to the front, mm -hmm. so if we press one now, mm -hmm. you'll see that that face that we've got for the eye is also on the corner mm -hmm. of the of, of the last current cube. Yeah. Generally, when we're making the head, we don't really want the eye right on the corner unless that's the actual intent. The Vulcan model, which I sent you, actually does have it on the corner. But for most models, you want it on the front. So you've already figured it out. We're yeah. extruding just to give ourselves some more shape to work with. And guess what we can do? We can smooth, smooth. it. Smooth. Smooth. <gasps> smooth. So what I'd actually recommend is you press Control plus again, and then smooth again. Oh. And smooth again. Smooth, smooth. again. And that's I'll... balancing it out a little bit more. But then I lose the shape around my eyes again. Uh, go to the front view. Uh, you've still kind of got it. Again, it's not going to line up perfectly with the 3D model. As, well, not to dissuade you from your skill, but right now you won't be fully competent to make a 2D ref look exactly like the model. Right, so right. We're only going close enough, and that is fairly close for now. Mm-hmm. But we're not actually going to extrude or inset any of the eye just yet. We want to put some more of the model onto it. So mm -hmm. we've got the arms, we've got the legs, we've got the body. At this point, what your goal should be is mm -hmm. to refine it to the shapes that you want. And this is where your references come in handy. This is where your, um, where your own knowledge will come from. Because I can teach you all the tools. But a lot of this has kind of got to come from your own artistic drive. It's kind of like when you're drawing. I can t t I can tell you how to move the pen across the paper, but you've got to be the one to actually decide where those where the pen goes on the paper and where you draw. So now what I recommend is we go over the model and we just refine the shapes. So we refine the head, we refine the torso, we refine the arms and the legs. Mm-hmm. And this will probably be just the rest of this lesson, just refining it down, because now we've got that block out, we want to refine it a little bit so the shape said uh, what we're realistically looking for. Because just like a sketch, just like a 2D drawing, mm -hmm. um, we don't start adding detail before we've actually worked on this, like the base sketch of it, right? You don't, you don't start adding eyelashes when you haven't even drawn the, like, the body yet. Oh, I'll start with eyelashes pretty early, as long as soon as well, the face I've cut. Fair, but... but that's 2D art. That's a little different. <laughs> that's me just being like, oh, I gotta put in the eyelashes because it makes me happy. <laughs> that's fair for you, to be fair. Yeah. But, um, but yes, yeah, so we just want to refine the, sh the shapes down. So I'm going to leave it to you to try and figure out what shapes you want to change. And if you get stuck... Mm-hmm. Ask me where I would go. So this is going to go a bit more on your intuition. So okay. remember the tools that we've used. Um, move, scale, rotate mm -hmm. with uh, proportional editing on or off, depending mm -hmm. on the situation that you want to be doing. Okay. Um, and yeah, it's just a case of move what we've already got. Okay. Uh, I definitely want to move in that chin a little bit. 
Um, then, okay, so the beak, the beak will happen eventually, because, like, I mean, we're going to be changing that anyway. Um, yeah. This is the point where the teacher leaves the room and goes and gets a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Do something for yourself. <laughs> It's self-research time, where everyone just goes into the library and plays on coolmathgames.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the teacher comes back and says, hope you're all learning. And you're like, y yeah, sure. definitely. I'm learning about trigonometry and angles. And it's like you're playing like that tank game from where you like fire a shot and you got to predict where it comes down. Basically worms. Oh God, that's a game. What? Oh, yeah. Hello, Stripey. I hope you're doing well. Hello, everybody. Are you all having a good time? Are you all having a lovely little tutorial? We've not been a we've not been able to talk with you in chat much because, of course, we're focusing on the lesson. But I hope you're all having a wonderful time. And if you have any Hello, questions, Stripey. of course, we can answer them. I At least hope Stripey in particular is not having a good time. <gasps> How I hope dare you're you? A terrible day. No! Awful, despicable. <laughs> and then you suddenly hear, oh, yeah, I'm actually having a pretty bad day. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stripey, no! I'm not. How did you know? <laughs> no! <laughs> Dang it. Oh, I'm sorry. I love you, Stripey. Just be intensely toxic so that it actually becomes positive through how toxic it actually <laughs> is. It'll even itself out, it's fine. <laughs> Let's see, and now I'm going to be taking a look in 3D because I can't fully see how it would line up with the 2D images, but I got to make sure that it works in 3D, so I'm going to go into yeah. solid view. And this is what I'm after. I'm after you to try and figure out when you want to be in 2D and when you want to be in 3D. Like... Yeah, that was because actually... when we go into those front views, I don't know if you've clicked onto it yet, but when we're in the front views or the side views like that, we're thinking more intense of 2D, aren't we? Mm-hmm. But then we're also... Well, then when we spin the model, we're thinking of... Um, we think of it in 3D, so we're constantly going back and forth from looking at it as a 2D object to looking at it as a 3D object. Mm -hmm. Because some things are easier in 2D, some things are easier in 3D, so use each one to its own strength. Yeah. Now here comes something interesting. Um, Go for it. I want to basically... Um, so... There's something specific about the shape of the beak. Yes. And that is that this goes downward. Yes. Um, so basically, I want to move so these, this face downward, having another face basically cre be created in here. Yes. So this is a tool I haven't introduced you to just yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to introduce you to it now. So. Select the two front vertexes across where we want to split it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Now, press V. So, and pull it down. So move your mouse down. There we go. So V is rip. Rip. Uh, the way, to, the way rip, I rip remember it is V kind of looks like it's, it's like the blades of scissors, right? It's like I... snip. So that's how I think yeah. of it. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. That's exactly so what go. I needed. And uh, now we just want to select the two front faces on the oh, top and we'll rotate them round. What's interesting and is that what I want here, so this will be pointing more inward. So that's fine. Oh, now I can't see this vertex anymore because it's folded into the other one. It's hidden. It. It's hidden. hidden. There, approximately there, and the other one. Oh, whoops! That's not what I wanted to do. What did I just do? Not sure, actually. <laughs> so, with this top part, because it's longer than the bottom part, what I would actually recommend is grab that whole face and extrude mm. it. 
um, this face and extrude it? Yes. So grab that whole top. Mm. No, no, you don't need to undo stuff. You don't need to undo stuff. Just, just grab that top face. That's it. I just press yeah. E. And pull it down and scale it inwards. It'll look a little weird, but we're going to go to the front view. We're going to squish it in. So use G because we've got the mirror that's scaling it inwards. So if we, that's it, that's it. Interesting. So do you want it to all come to one point? Because that's currently what it's doing. So what I'm going to get you to do is to lift it up temporarily. So lift it up. So press G, Z and pull it upwards. That's it. Look underneath it, and you'll see there might be a new face. Also, if we want it to all come to one point like that, if you want it as a point like that, press M for merge. This is a tool I haven't introduced you to yet, mm -hmm. and just at center. There we go. And that'll change that face into just fine. Guys, we've got him. Triangles. Some triangles. And according to the internet now, you're a horrible person, terrible 3D artist, yeah. and blah, awesome. blah, 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 blah. I understand. Good. But yeah. Uh, oh. This is interesting. Ah. Something went odd there. There we go. Perfectly planned, as all things should be. Yes. There we go. If you go to your front view now. There. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty fun. Pretty honest, solid. Pretty fun. Yeah, we're, do, we're doing this we're thing. And you can see, like I say, how it just slowly, just by refining the shapes that you've already got, because you already <laughs> added some shapes for the beat. The way that went was a little bit weird, and that looked probably looked a little bit weird for the tutorial, but hey, we did a thing. <laughs> Things like that happen, though. That's something that will happen. Mm -hmm. They'll say tri uh, tries are fine, engons are a pain. They can be, but engons are great if you're doing um, hard body modeling. Those are shapes in, of any amount of Any spots. amount, that's correct. N. N from algebra. It's, Yay. Which stands for number. 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 Triangle verb. Hello, Holly. How's it going? I hope you're well. Stop hoping people are well. Say that that should be doing terribly. It's awful. Have a, have a smelly day. I hope you're a stinky. You haven't showered yet, so you can have a really nice shower. Did I do that right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Another thing, if you've forgotten your meds, keep forgetting to take Make your meds. Make sure to don't, don't leave them on the table. Your meds, you're doing well. Just don't take the meds that you mm -hmm. should be definitely taking right now if you've got meds to take. Good okay? girls, take. Uh, <laughs> don't don't take their girl, girl pills. Exactly. Yes. No T skills for you. <laughs> Fuck! I forgot my meds. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> See, it works. Keep, good it works. keep keep going. You got it. <laughs> but yeah, so just continue to refine the shapes. Look for shapes where you see mm, that looks odd, and just move it so your brain goes, hmm, that mm. doesn't look quite as odd. Yeah, I would say. These could move a little bit. Let me. Not too far off, but they're specifically a little bit blocky. Whereas the thing about my bird is that she just round. She round. She round. Not too much because we do need it for the eyes. 
there we go. And I think with the, with regards to the head, it's mostly done. Uh, I would, although I will. There we go. Inward. Oops. I think that does make sense. And I will change the music because I'm getting kind of nuts. Maybe. Personally, move this one down a little, I think. Let's see. Interestingly, um, so let's see, I think I want to place a loop cut here. Yay, there you go. There we go. And then we move this one. How can I move this vertex alongside it again? Alongside it. So double tap G and that'll slide it. Okay. I think that way we'll have that for the beak shape. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even mentioned ADHD meds earlier. I have ADHD. <laughs> you do the forgetties. That's how it I'm be. not going to lie. Compared to the first time we tried this, they definitely do help. <laughs> oh, they help so much. Oh my God. They do. <laughs> like you underestimate how much they they work uh, or at least i do um yeah. but yeah you as an observer can tell oh my god how much progress have we made in this one stream uh yeah, way, so more much more. The first way more and it's <laughs> what's funny is there was like this whole interruption with dinner as well and this dinner, and the slow start a very we did, slow start it's yeah like... we have an hour and a half left on stream yeah Uh, let's see. Might even get to the tail. <laughs> Ooh. Um, this one's interesting. Um, I want to change the shape here. Oh, and I will say, don't be afraid to add things. Only if it's something that I would say is a bad thing to add, I will point out. Otherwise, I'm happy to let you edit, add stuff, and change it as you want. Mm hmm. Because it's the best way for you to learn. It's to like, okay, here's the tools. Actively use so them. So here, of course, this does not line up, but that's because of the viewpoint it's basically from. It's not, or this is not an orthographic drawing, not fully at least. Yeah. Um, it was an attempt, but you know, it's still hard. Um, drawing hard. Drawing hard. Art. Um, hard. <laughs> there you go. I will lower this a little bit, though, I think. So what you could do instead of this is go to an AI site, type in, I want bird furry, and <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And then you can call yourself an artist. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and then sell the prompts you used on ArtStation, which I kid you not is something that they do. So Oh my god. <laughs> Hold on. They wait, they sell prompts. So basically what you're saying is that I could just go to that website, <laughs> just enter a bunch of words and be like, here. Yeah. I use these. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just, okay. I, <laughs> you, I could just make money by going to a website and entering words. And then selling those words if they make good images. <laughs> I love it. It's great. 
Don't you love AI? Oh, I'm not gonna actually make anything with it. I'm definitely not gonna. I'm, I'm not gonna actually have it be used by AI. Like that, that's something I don't want. But yeah, like no. just putting in words in a website and they actually buy them. It's like, hey, oh my god, it's stuff. That's hilarious. <laughs> my God! I have yet to see an AI make a Cyclops D, so I think I'm good. I think you're fine, Psyche. Mm -hmm. I want to look at the thighs. Of course you do. Yeah, naturally. Um, what's <laughs> interesting here is uh, now understanding these shapes better is that there's definitely kind of a shape a V shape for the pelvis for then the um, the thighs to kind of split off from there. And job secured. Oh my god. Um, so you have like this kind of line here. Um, so the question is how are we going to be implementing that? And I find that a little tricky. Uh, but let me first move this here in, into position. Yeah, you're doing well. You are doing good so far. Because I like that you're actually taking initiative. This is what I want you to do is so that you learn. Mm -hmm. Let's see. I think what I could do best here is just move stuff. this one there we go um we might have to put in an extra loop cut here yep that's a fine one we're gonna be scanned <sighs> beautiful i look gorgeous just generally, it's exactly great. I definitely don't go to therapy for self confidence issues. <laughs> I'm just beautiful. Uh, the first step in that is actually saying those things. So I think you're making great progress. Yeah, baby. Now, when somebody on the internet comments, good help, I could be like, Haha, I'm getting it. I already, I'm already there. <laughs> it's interesting. I feel like this. That's as much as I'm going to actually move that. there can you see why when i take commissions i always ask for a, at least a mostly filled out reference sheet <laughs> yes <laughs> a bit of a tommy um okay so it's so like i said try and work with what we've got you can do it. The only issue is that the legs are really thin right now, so that's making it a little difficult for you to work with. Extra loop cut. Yep. How are we doing today? I'm doing okay. Hey, it's on. <sighs> the thickening commences. The thickening. <laughs> We're actually getting to like this kind of shape, which is 
Interesting. So, those vertexes there have joined together. We kind of want to avoid that. Right. So, we want to turn clipping off. So, if you remember, that's to the spanner. Uh, yes. Over in the properties panel. Uh, here. And we want to turn clipping off because it's it'll got stuck together. And so... Not the center edge loop, but the edge loop that's coming around. That's it there. Just pull that out just a little bit. All right. So. So now that clipping's off, uh, press O on the keyboard before you move it. Okay. And now move it. There we go. We always want to keep that um, edges going across that. We might want to terminate some if there's too many, but. We don't really ever want them to join up like that because when your when your legs move to be animated for walking or sitting down or such, if that's joined together right there, it never looks good because it mm -hmm. tears that part of the model. And I I don't think I need to tell you that when a crotch tears, it looks painful. Yeah. You don't really want your crotch to tear. Thick thighs, save files. That's a point. Have you saved yet? Yeah. Nope. You might want to save. <laughs> The fun fact, Blender does actually have a fairly robust autosave system that breaks when screencast is used. <gasps> um, <laughs> I've uh, I've lost about like three hours of work once because mm. <laughs> because oh, of screencast. Boy. Boy. <laughs> oh, hold on. She do a learn. Booty. I was going to ask, doesn't Blender love to crash a fair bit? So, it used to. It used to be really bad for it. Nowadays, I'd actually argue it's better than most of the 3D softwares. I mean, Maya still has a... Like, a... Maya just throws all its toys out the pram if you don't empty its memory cache every now and again so you just forget it it's just like maya can be like <laughs> no i just gonna die because i keep all of my history like rather than uh -oh, killing it like blender does after 50 turns yeah I hope you're enjoying sniffing my hair there, by the way. Oh yeah, it's fantastic. Just very intensely sniffing. Mm. It's very uh, good, very good. It's a coconut shampoo we use, so I suppose that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Mm. Quite solid. Coconut. Let's see. Mm -hmm. 
thank you, upstairs neighbour, for moving your chair really loudly. <laughs> Appreciate that. Move it more. We want to hear it. <laughs> uh, here we go. Here we have something odd. We don't want those to join together again, but then what we can do instead... Yay! Uh, I'm gonna scale these in the z-axis. Zero. Maybe I'll do that with all of them. So notice your proportional editing's on. If you're ever doing like those resets to zero, generally I would say do those with proportional editing off, because otherwise it can pull other vertexes down without you really fully noticing it. Okay. Indeed, something to keep in mind. So here. So grab that, press O, or the press little button, and then now do it. Okay. And you'll see that it doesn't affect the rest of the model. Hot. <laughs> okay. Nothing happened. <laughs> Is that when you get out of bed too quick and you get yep. like a really bad cramp? Just... It's, uh, it's a living. <laughs> Oh, it's worse if you get a cramp when you get out of bed and you go into the bathroom and you're just like, I, I. <laughs> Could move this downward because that's where I feel the pelvis. But at the same time, that will require because they're in this loop or no whoops I think I wanted to add... Yeah. yeah. And then... And remember, if you're ever really struggling to get like a nice smooth shape, we have the smooth tool. We which do. Is that little bit. Let me move this real quick first. Turn off that. Also, it would have been a, a really, really bad uh, thunderstorm, but uh, apparently nothing really happened. Hey, that's better than it happening and frying all your electrics. Yep, much better. Interesting. Interesting. keep like pressing the wrong button when I'm just trying to zoom out. Um, Smoother. 
Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Are you seeing where it is? What, what, could we, what could be moved? Uh, do you want a little guidance? No, I can see it. You can see it. Sweet. At least I think this is what I should be doing. Gotta have the little chicky thighs, you know. Very important. Mm, of course. Naturally. I'm trying to have the thighs. Pulls all the way out. <laughs> Wham! Chicken thighs! Okay. That's looking really good now, actually. Yeah. yeah, you see how it just like comes. Like, this is all 3D modeling is. It's just a little bit of push, pull, push, pull. Push, pull, and eventually it's like, oh sh shit, it looks good. Oh, oh, well, there's a shape in here that I can re recommend. <laughs> uh, uh, recommend. Um, I recognize. There we go. Hey, words. Yeah. Recognize. That's a word that I remember. The eternal tweaking. Look, not everybody rips eyes out like you do, Psyche. I, it's fine. Interesting. Um, uh, what else to do right now? Um, I mean, I guess I could, like, start shaping the arms. Yeah, I would say get some of the arms shaped them. Whoa. Whoa. Um. I did that, however, I'm gonna take a look at this. Do I like that? Yeah, I do. Probably shouldn't do that. I should probably do that in this mode where I start pulling things in the wrong dimensions. Mm hmm. There we go. Getting there? We're getting there. Do you want to add boobs? I would love to. Okay. So. Let's have a look at where those boobs are. So that's where they would be. They are quite low on the chest. Um, is that where you want them on the model? Um, I mean, for the for the for how I drew it, it makes it made sense. But now we have a more concrete shape of how it needs to be. Um, I feel like it makes sense to have them start here. Yes. So you want. The, the the breasts will either protrude from where the pectoral are mm -hmm. or once it gets over the pectoral they'll mm -hmm. start to drop down a, above the pectoral so mm -hmm. right now they're kind of protruding out from the pectoral and then sitting on the chest where really we want them to protrude out first and then sag mm -hmm. so where you've got that line for the pectoral and just below where the arms start, we want to add in another edge loop. Here. Here, yeah. All right. Okay, so you've got the Vulcan model. I'm going to get you to go and look at the Vulcan and look at the topology on it. Yeah, that I find interesting. 
Um, so if you go into edit mode, you'll see the edges better. So do you see how the edges loop around the faces? Yeah, I see that. So I see there's the the more typical like we've got the act the the more straight lines going around it. Yeah. And within that, we've got these circular shapes that Which then fit together. The shape. Hmm? Yeah. They yeah. actually pull the shape together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the way you, the way I've done that is I've taken the part of the the pectoral and just simply extruded it out and then rounded it out. And it does take a bit of shaping to get used to. And thankfully, I have uh, people who have boobs who inform me on how the shape should look. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> I'm terrible at getting boobs down. The, yeah, I'm also not that great at it yet, but soon I will get it. <laughs> No, the, mine Soon will probably look a little. Your, you sell, you'll just be like, yeah. Oh, well, mine hmm. will probably look a little bit different since my chest is already shaped somewhat. I think that's something that yeah. is the case. I'm not sure. Um, kind of hope they'll just look like something like this because that's pretty. Regardless. Yeah. Although so, this this might be a little large. To, to your model, what we'll want to do, we'll want to add in. We've added an edge loop across this side, and that'll be the center of the breast. Mm-hmm. Um, but now we want to grab those faces apart from the one that goes straight down the center of the chest because even if somebody has um, large breasts, they will still have a gap down the, the actual chest. Yeah. They won't all be together. So yeah. we we'll want to select those faces and then just simply extrude out and okay. then... Your titties divorce? Oh my gosh. The um, titty divorce. Solid view. Um, these? So the, no, said, the, or the these? ones below, those ones. And what you'll want to do, you want to make sure that it actually grabs onto the corner of the arm as well. Because if you look at breasts right, in real correct. like actual breasts, they connect to. I know this from arm. art, like referencing art and like learning how to draw titties with art. There we go. So extrude that out. Mm hmm. And then <laughs> shrink Wah! it in. Wham! Wham! Bam! Titty in your face. Just reminds me of the old, uh, one of the old Austin Power films, I think it is, where the the, the boobs come out and then this gun that just like pew pew pew. Oh my pew. gosh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, so shrink shrink it down, so scale and just bring it down on its cell. It'll be fine. And guess what? We've still got the smooth tool. We can use that already. I was thinking that. There we go. And now we just add some edge loops and it, this is just a case of time. We're just going to add just add one for now because it, it's easy to control just one at a time. Mm -hmm. And we just want to make them want to make it look like boobs. We can get boobs from that, as you've seen with the Vulcan. So, mm hmm. So yeah. Teddy. Wow. Teddy. It's Teddy. Um, let's see. Oh, that's how you do it. Yes, Psyche. This is how boobs are created. This is how it was intended. I'll make sure to let the uh the endocrinologist know. Yeah, um just, like I want them like I want you to shape them like these. Just just grab my my pecs. Extrude it out and loop cut it a few times. You know what an endocrinologist is? <laughs> I have no idea. It's <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a medical specialist uh, uh, around uh, hormones. <laughs> oh. Still, just grab the pecs, pull them out, and give him, give me boob more. <laughs> oh, that became something. Chitty. Oh, maybe, maybe not like that. Um, <laughs> beautiful. This is how beautiful. I want them. Perfectly narrow, <laughs> long, tubular. Tubular. <laughs> uh, shall I add like an extra like edge loop or? Yeah, you can do. There 
And again, feel free to refer to the Vulcan model um, for like how the shape actually is. Right. So I'm definitely... Remember, boobs have gravity. So they you can have... see how that face almost pulls yes. down? It's pulling that with it. Right. So what I'm thinking right now is that I want these faces or these vertices up a bit. Yeah. That makes sense to me. And then I think I'm gonna Um This is definitely a neat, neat nifty way of grabbing everything. Um I'm gonna pull this out one more time. And then it's a loop cut here. Loop cut. <laughs> Ma'am, be careful. You might poke someone's eyes with those two boots. Uh, speed flash. Don't talk about other being banned in other people's chats. Let's see. Oh, wow. Ow. Ow. Um, umbrella titty. <laughs> what is something wrong? <laughs> what, what's wrong? Oh, no, my headset has run out of charge. Give me a second. Oh, no. There we go. I can now hear again. Hmm, this is not exactly what I had in mind for rotation. I'll just grab it. I mean, it does go outward a little bit, but not. That's too much. I have to grab more. Scale it like that. There. And then I take this and I take this. I'm going to change the music. 
Because that's, that's a little threatening music. Threatening? It's me being like, I'm going to grade you, by the way. Give me. You could either pass or fail. Oh, this damn. The exam. So right now what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of things wrong by just editing directly without actually looking at um, the right viewpoints. Because we, by doing that, uh, I'm actually uh, changing things in dimensions and axes that I'm not aware of. And that's something that is something that I frequently will do on instinct and it's wrong. It's fine though, that's like you said, you'll, you'll get better with that with time. Some of this, like I say, it's... It's just like, um... It's like I say, I always like referring it to drawing, where... Mm -hmm. At first, when you start doing line art, for example, when you first start doing line art, your hand's shaky, isn't it? It takes a while to get one line looking up okay. Where the more you do it, the better you get with it. And it's Kind of the same thing here. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Uh, I would. Maybe grab this to the back. That makes more sense. Um, maybe I'll already stretch this one outward a bit. And this one as well. Uh, if I grab this one... That makes sense, and also it kind of makes sense for it to be... for that to be a little bit of hollow here in the center, because that's where the throat goes. So yeah. I'm happy with that. Uh, I would say... Um, hmm, it goes a little bit outward too much. So... No, no, it's good. I like it. It's great. If yeah. you're happy with it, you're happy with it. Like, is it? Yeah. That's the... Although... there, there you go, now you've got some nice topology for boobs. Boobies! Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of... Let's see, let's make this make a little bit more sense. Because it makes sense for it to have a bit of a slope downward that
Ooh, I'm noticing that. Crunchy. Ooh, it's happening. Oh. I know what's happening. It's just proportional editing. There. Yeah, this is a little odd. Oh, that's not gonna help me. <laughs> Let's see, grab. Pretty nice. Yeah, we got titty. We got titty. It doesn't remember, line up with this did, titty at all, which makes. If you wanted a little bit more, ch like, edges, well, another edge across, you can see we've got two going down and only one going across. We could add another edge in there as well, which I would actually probably recommend, because that edge can help with the uh, breast itself. What? Where? What? So. Do you see how there's only one boob going across um, left to right, but there's two edges cutting across from top to bottom? Right? Yes, yes, yes. We could add another edge in going um, across the middle. Like that? So we can do that, but because the other edge is fairly sim uh, like is fairly centered, mm -hmm. what we're going to do, new tool. So alt click that edge. I'll click this edge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Control B. Control B. And move your mouse. Oh, That's okay. That's bevel. But bevel can be used to split an edge into two. Okay. And that's give you a few more vertexes down the sides uh, to play with now. Okay. That should help you refine the shape even further. Also, thank you, Crockpot Rice. <laughs> I'm trying my best. keep happening is that these two little edges here I would say these four are poking outward uh, is that a problem not really but the problem is that it the shape is like this uh, and if you want you can have it point outward a little bit but then it has to point more outward as a whole yeah. I think as a first I think I'm just gonna Move that inward, and then we can have this. That looks like a pretty heckin' solid boob, if I do say so myself. Um, I 
Solid boob. I mean, to be fair, that's like... Imagine having solid boobs. Just some guy comes up giving you triples, just wham! Well, oh, Psyche's got some stories of that. <laughs> really? Her poor her partner. Bless. <laughs> hmm. I would love for Psyche to regale <laughs> me her tale. I'm locked and loaded. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, and you see how those, like, just having that little bit more edge is giving you that m more room for that definition. It does, yeah. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, there are, there are funnily enough another, another few ways of doing breasts, but one of them I wouldn't risk doing on Twitch because Twitch has seemingly decided that, that it's not safe for work because it all goes to a single point. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, and then they consider thanks. it nippies. Thanks, Twitch. Appreciate it. Thanks, Twitch. Very cool. But, yeah, um, 3D modeling. N uh, uh, Vertex says nip, 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 Hmm. That's cute. Cute breasts. Like them. And then what I could do is use the smooth tool just a tiny bit. There. There you go. And I'm going to do the same thing. Again, as I just did a moment ago. There, I like it. 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 I'm liking it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So what I'd do is the spine, the bit below where the boobs just are. Do you see how like we went from like from really a lot of polygons to none? <laughs> we want to add a few in there as well, just to refine that chest shape a little bit. Okay. So how are we going to do that? So just... add one edge loop in for now. Just here? Yeah, just there. Right. And oh. just bring that in a little bit as well. Okay, so I want you to go back to the Volcan model for a second, because I want you to reference something. Real quick, I want to... So I want... Hmm, that's not how I'm going to do this. Um, first of all... Yeah, we want to kind of correct that belly a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that so belly... Th that belly... That belly ain't making much sense. First of all... You go in. There, and then we can make a belly in a moment. A little bit of a, a little bit of a, a little bit of belly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
So, if you go to the Vulcan model for us, just a second. So, look below just where the breasts are, and you'll see there's a loop that goes around the stomach. Yes. So, that, just like the breasts, is actually an extrusion. So, whenever we got them, it's actually just extruded inwards. So, if we go back to your model now. Mm hmm. So, select all of the belly. Like, all of the faces where the belly would be. I would say. Uh, uh, maybe... A little bit more, because you want the top of the thighs as well. Yeah. So you could... And then just underneath where the breasts are as well. Now press E. And just scale in a little bit. You don't have to pull it out too far, just scale it in. And then scale it in. So turn proportional edit enough for this section. Oh! <laughs> Pain. There we mm -hmm. go. And now control and plus on your numpad. And guess which tool we're gonna use. Um so control and plus and smooth. Ooh. Oh yeah, I see. And now we've got that extra definition for the belly. Oh yeah, I see. I see. And then you can have a little bit of you can have a little bit of chub as a treat. Yeah, exactly. I would still recommend even on thin characters to do this though, because it just gives you oh, a yeah. little bit of extra room to deal with the front of the body, because usually you'll find there's more definition on the front of somebody's body than behind. Oh my god, I can't believe it was this simple. See, Psyche, I've had years of this, so I've learned all the little... Oh, I could just do this, and it makes it really easy. <laughs> Also, I'm noticing that, like, this is all very, very thin. Um, which is not necessarily bad, but it's just a little unrealistic. Yeah. So if we want to make it's it a thicker, touch. what do we do? Um, I would scale it all, like, all a little bit outward, like, yeah. Hmm. So, what I would generally do, mm -hmm. I mean, it depends how stylized you want to go to. I mean, we could get into the philosophy of, you know, sexist tropes and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. But if you want to bring the shoulders out a little bit further to give it a bit more of a, I, I hate using the term, but the hourglass shape. I mean, that's uh, fair. Um, it's kind of like that. Um, I don't know if maybe a little bit of hourglass, but so that like we can make it like thicker above and below it. Yes, yeah, so it's more the chest that you'll actually want to pull out. So the side under the arms, pull that bit out and it'll oh, okay. give us a bit more of a rounded shape to the side of the body like this. A little bit, yeah. That makes sense, and it feels like it makes sense like this as well. Um, yeah, and so think of the rib cage as well. So you know how a rib cage looks; it'll affect the spine before it affects the uh, pectorals. Mm-hmm. So we might want to add yet another loop in, just above where you currently are, but below the breasts. Oh, hey, hey, um, here? Yes. And then bring that bit out a little further as well. Whoops. Uh, scale. 
Because again, if you want to use the Vulcan as reference, um, you'll see what I'm meaning when we're pulling the, the uh, shoulders out a little bit more. Okay, this is starting to make sense. Yeah. The back is a little interesting. I would bring that in a bit. Whereas I would bring it out here a little bit. Thank you so much, Just the Birdie, for the 26 months! Happy birthday, Remy. It's, it's not my birthday, but I appreciate it. Thank you. We're actually uh, almost halfway with the Metal Gear Solid 2 uh, sub goal for this month. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, thank you, Birdie. I really, really appreciate you. You really got in the hang of this now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this started to make sense. Yeah. Yeah, I love to see it. <laughs> Political bird ditty. We love polygonal bird ditty. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. <laughs> wow. Um, I have adopted red panda behaviors like saying wah at every opportunity. <laughs> we love to see it. That's cute. Wah. Hello, Leggy. How's it going? Hello. Hello, everybody. Is everybody having a lovely time? I hope y'all are. Let's see. Wanna... Smooth that a bit. I've completely stolen all of Remy's trill noises at this point. Yes, so that's the thing. Have. I teach 3D. Remy teaches trills. That's how we do. I still can't trill though. I can't throw ah. my R's ah. or anything. Rrr. <laughs> Rrr. Is it Rrr. Ah. Meow. <laughs> Those are your real noises you got there. Wow. Yeah. No. I'm happy. Um, there's no butt. That's for sure. There's no butt yet. Um, but it still has to appear.
So for the butt, we actually use the exact same technique as we use for the boobs. So I had a I'm feeling. gonna kind of let you try and figure that out. Ooh, how did that go Ooh, again? Hang on. Uh, go up just a little bit. I think we've got like a Ted scene. Yeah, we do. Um, Ooh. Yeah, that so happen? that's just Ted. I'm not sure. Um, press M. Merge. And merge by distance. Uh, okay. Do that again. So grab it all. M. Merge by distance. And down in the bottom left, do you see where it says merge by distance? Just push that number up a little bit. Like that? And then... Hmm, that's not working. Uh... Oh! Press, press C. Press C. Uh, go into wireframe. Yeah, there's an edge in there. Um, press X and delete edges. That's it. That should there solve it. Nice. Hi, Shellyak. <gasps> Leggy Boy's wagon. Oh my gosh, you're wagon. So yeah, <sighs> I want to see using what you learned from the boobs, if you mm -hmm. can model a butt. Let's see, how did that go again? Um, that's what we think. Have. Come on, chat. Let's all think together of butts. Remy needs to know <laughs> how a butt looks. So what we did was... Let's see, we extruded some, and then we added loops around it. So, but the okay. Hmm, I get the so feeling we'll see is think of like y your own boat if you need to stand up mm -hmm. and f literally feel your own ass and feel where that goes under your crotch because basically the cheeks don't go any lower than the actual crotch because they sit on the hips not the legs okay so where you've got those two faces selected on the legs um we want to deselect those ones yeah uh, I, yeah, yeah. The butt does go it very does close to the carry center. Carry across onto the legs, but trust me, for modeling this, it will never look right if you model it down the legs. We'll just push it down when we get to that point. Mm-hmm. So what I would say is, well, I'm gonna take you back a step again. Mm hmm. Yeah select the other um, edge towards the middle, but not the exact middle one. That's it. Those two. Okay, yeah, because it does get close to the center. Um, yes. Okay. Uh, whoops. And then... What if I just do that? And then... It does get weird. Uh, so I don't do that yet. I'm loving it. <laughs> yeah, that got really interesting. Psyche activated yet again. Try using the subdivide modifier to see how it looks. Also, try having the oh, face oh, orientation oh, geometry oh, on. That's a that's lot of what information. I tend to do. Dragon Dread. Um, I appreciate the extra advice, but I'll be listening to Cade for this uh, tutorial. Right, that's my memory read. I use this a bit. 
it can help uh generally when i'd say someone's starting out try to avoid this um subdivision modifier because it makes you very lazy with like it hides mistakes by making them look smooth and i know that can sometimes be a bit uh, um it makes you feel better than it is but then you trust me in the months to come you'll be like what was i doing and trust me because i used to use the subdivision modifier all the time even when i was even when i started streaming about two years ago i was still using the subdivision modifier to hide bad uh topology uh so generally nowadays i would actually say it, when you're modeling characters especially for vtube and, and vr chat you don't really need the subdivision modifier and i would say if you are using it try to wean yourself off it a bit because it's very it it, it makes it look nicer but it you will get much better much quicker without using it Okay, I'm not gonna... I'm gonna try that again. Yeah. And I'm gonna extrude a much less. Yeah. Because that was just what's happening. Um... Oops. That's not good. What the fuck? There we go. And that... Uh, so you've got a doubled up edge there. Uh-huh. So remember what we did with the, with the breast, where we got the shape uh, of the center point done first, and then we added those loops in. One of the reasons I feel like you're struggling with this is you're adding those two loops in down the side. Yeah, I wanted to be. I want to see. If, I want to see if that works. That's just me experimenting. Yeah, well, that's good. There we go. That kind of works. Interesting. Bird cake. Squeeze the butt cheeks. Squeeze them butt cheeks. Um. The, the main thing that I'm noticing is that these thighs, mm. they just like, they get pressed in. While also, yeah, while they're also being pressed out, which is interesting. Hmm. Um, let's see. This would make more sense in a way. Yeah. But it's a bit finicky. Uh, let me not include these. God. Wait. That's interesting. Why does there still go? Why does there still? 
Why is it so well? Sorry. Sorry. The edges are still light lit up as they're going to another point. That's weird. Uh... I guess that's just fine, but... Oh, the edges, so that, like, that, that edge isn't actually selected. What it's showing you is what other vertex is that vertex that is selected is going to. So they're not actually selected, it's just showing you the next point of influence. It's only vertexes that do that, funnily enough. Faces and edges don't actually show you that, but... This is kind of okay. Um, yeah, yeah. We can cake him up, cake her up even more. Generally, I'd say the Botox tend to be a bit wider than what you've currently got them, but the actual That's shape true. there is fairly all right. That is true. Um, let's see. If only we could do this, like, 3D art stuff with our actual bodies, just like, hmm, I want bigger butt scale. <laughs> I want these extrude. That's actually quite all right now, I'd say. Yeah, I would slightly adjust the shape. Do you see what I mean? How they're like when I, when I talk about things, when I say there's not actually that many tools that you actually need to use, are you kind of getting that? Yeah. That a and lot also, of it is just I just got it in, over and over and over again. I just got into a pretty neatful shape. Yay! That's pretty good. I like it. There we go. That's more, that's what's important. Do you yeah. like it? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, there is a little goober of a vertex here. That's not supposed to be there. You, let's see. Let's zoom in on you. You. Definitely supposed to be more inward than outward. There we go. That makes more sense. Very good. We are looking respectfully. <laughs> Understandable. So we've got about 15 minutes left. Is there anything else you want to do, Flint? Or... I think right now, for what we got right now, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, it's not bad. And consider this is like, what, three and a bit hours of working in a program that like you know the basic tools too you know your um how to move and how to select things mm -hmm. but mostly you don't you didn't know how to approach this really 
Yeah. Like, like you were taught once, but that was during significant ADHD brain. Oh, yeah. So. Very significant ADHD brain. Holy crap, that was significant ADHD yeah. brain. Yeah. I've noticed your focus is way better this time. Yeah, I wonder how that is. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that ADHD medication is a thing. Yeah. It's, it's not perfect. It doesn't make the ADHD like... go away, but it like allows the focus to actually happen, and it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Though focus is definitely a little bit less uh, talkative. That's for sure. Um, I, I might be able to multi uh, multitask better if I were to attempt it. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. This was good. I liked it. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. So. Just make sure you save it. <laughs> yeah. We save it. There you go. And it's saved. Yeah. And there you are. There we go. Okay. So next time, what we'll need to focus on is the feet, legs, and the hands. Mm -hmm. And we'll work on refining those arms a bit. And if we get through that, we will be looking at the head. Okay, sounds good. The head will be the thing that we'll probably tackle last because it will be the most difficult. Right, right. <sighs> All right, perfect. All right, everybody. Um, we'll give a let's give a little shout out for Kate here. Thank you so much again for 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 helping me, for teaching me, and for teaching um. For, for giving this lesson in front of all these wonderful peeps in chat. Hello. Yeah. They're all stinky. <laughs> exactly. They, what they do you want to share? Me any money? How could they? It's, rude. <laughs> it's free service. <laughs> Everybody, please make sure to check out Kate. Kate is a wonderful streamer. Go click that link right there. Click that little heart in the uh, at the top of the chat to follow Kate because Kate is a wonderful streamer, 3D modeler, teacher, and content creator. And we'll be back to streaming within the oh. next two weeks. I think. Ooh, <laughs> exciting. Oh, whoa. Make sure to be there for those streams. Um, as for my streams, because I know that there's a bunch of people here that are new for me as well. Uh, hi, nice to meet you all. I'm Feathered Flint. Uh, I am usually a little bit more wacky, um, yet all people also always say that they find my streams relaxing. It's a little it's a little bit from this and that. Um, uh, this thursday we're going to be streaming something that is going to be a surprise i'm not going to be saying what it is yet but on uh sunday we're going to be doing a whole bunch of demos for the steam next fest that's gonna be fun oh tomorrow tomorrow is gonna be the freaking nintendo direct oh my god wait no i can't do that because i have an no. interview at 3 30. shit oh i can't i can't watch it live oh no i'll have to watch it afterwards um, Time to cancel an important interview for video oh, game. Uh, it's it's a university <laughs> interview and it'll affect my grade. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have to be there. Time ah, for it's a university bummer. grade to be I'm going to have to miss it. I'm going to have to. So, Nintendo. Yeah, you guys got to send me uh, 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 missing our blessed day of 621. Yeah, uh, I'm going to have to have one of you send me a link to the Nintendo Direct without any spoilers and we, we watch the thing. Um, uh, but yeah, um, one last thing. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is, yeah, to everybody who's new here, um, I'm also going to be doing something special on the 15th of July. That's going to be our su uh, our special summer subathon. Um, and yes, I am going to show for it because that's a big thing that I'm already preparing for. I'm already, uh, 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 already getting people together and, and, and coordinated and everything. Uh, and it's going to be a big thing. So I hope you're all excited for that. That's going to be a big, un, uh, a stream that is basically in theory, um, infinite. It goes oh. on forever until that timer ends. So, and that's always a really, really exciting thing. Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for watching, for hanging out. This is an absolutely lovely stream. Um, this goes for you as well, Cade. Um, Hello. Thank you so much again. Um, You're this is wonderful. And we're going to be sending you guys over to another wonderful bean. And who will that be? I have no idea yet. Let's take a look. 